Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an inexpensive Ryzen powered PC from Menace Forum known as the UM480XT. Now this is one of their newer offerings over on their website and it's coming to us from their Venus series. So we've got that really nice looking case here. Vertical stand does come included and one of the main reasons I wanted to take a look at this was the price. Bare bones model coming in at 189 on their website, and I wanted to see if it would be worth picking something like this up. Plus, oddly enough, I actually haven't done a video on the APU they're using in this mini PC. Inside of the box, along with the UM480XT, we're also going to get a 65 watt power supply, HDMI cable, vase amount with all the hardware we need. This will also support a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the case itself, so we get the cabling there, and a vertical stand. So if you wanted to set this horizontally, you could always do it. We've got some rubber feet on the bottom. Looks a little something like this. Or you could go vertically with it, which is what I prefer to do. I personally just like the way these mini PCs look sitting in these stands, and it kind of cleans everything up if you ask me. When it comes to I.O. on this mini PC, up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We've also got a BIOS reset button and two USB-C ports. Both of these are USB-C 3.2, both of them support 4K 60 out. There's not much on each side with this mini PC, but we do have some ventilation. And moving around back, we've got our power input, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, two full-size USB 2.0 ports, and dual full-size HDMI 2.0. So in total, we can do four displays out. We've got those two USB-C ports up front and two HDMI around back. Now I wanted to give you a quick look at the internals. It's actually really easy to get in here. Bottom plate can house a 2.5 inch drive along with the cabling that's included. It supports dual channel DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And we've got a single M.2 SSD here. So if you did end up going with the bare bones model, it's really easy to get in here and add your storage and RAM. Now when it comes to the overall specs of the UM480XT, for the CPU we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, so we are working with the 4000 series Ryzen APU, 8 cores, 16 threads, and this will run it up to 65 watts, base clock of 2.9 gigahertz and a boost up to 4.2, and yeah, it'll hit those kind of clocks at 65 watts. We've also got that built-in Radeon iGPU with 7 execution units running at 1600 megahertz, it supports DDR4 dual channel up to 64 gigs running at 3200 megahertz. It supports one PCIe M.2 SSD and one 2.5 inch drive. And if you opt to get a fully configured unit, this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. All right, so I've got the UM480XT updated, ready to go here. I'll give you a quick look here, 4800H, 32 gigs of RAM, this is at 3200. And of course, we've got the Radeon iGPU based on Vega because we are on a 4000 series APU. And really, when it comes down to it, the main reason I wanted to take a look at this was on the channel, we haven't taken a look at the 4800H, which I was kind of surprised about. Pricing on these mini PCs is actually really good. So if we head over to Menace Forum's website, 189 for a bare bones unit. You can also go up to 16 gigs of RAM here. It'll bring it to 249. And when you compare it to newer 6 and 7,000 series mini PC, this is actually really inexpensive. But we're not going to see the kind of performance that we saw at a 6,000 and 7,000, but there are people out there that don't need that kind of performance. Web browsing, really snappy here. Heading over to their official website. This is a very image heavy page. As you can see, everything loads right up here. And of course, they've got higher end PCs that you can buy, but uh, they're going to come in a lot more expensive. One of my favorites right now is the UM790 Pro. And if we take a look at the price difference here, you can see that UM790 Pro bare bones is 549 when the UM480XT is coming in at 189 bare bones. So yeah, I mean, you're definitely going to spend a lot less. And when it comes to using this as an everyday PC for web browsing, email checking, document editing, uh, even 4K video playback, it's got more than enough power to handle those type of tasks. And speaking of 4K, let's uh, search up a 4K 60 video here. And with this, I do want to go full screen with it. I'm going to reset the frame counter, but we'll go back up to 4K. Stats for nerds, you can see right there we are at 4K. 
The 4800H at that kind of wattage we're running right now will do 4K 60 HDR all day long. You don't have to worry about video playback and you can do this from internal storage, streaming, external storage. This chip is great for media playback. One thing I always like to check with these mini PCs is the stock TDP. We're working with an H variant, so it should be up to 45 to 65. And uh, real quick, we can actually check that. I've got CPU Z running. Here's going to be our, this is going to be our wattage right here over in core temp. It's just really easy to see with that application. Run a stress test. All eight cores are maxed out. Jumped up to 45 watts. But this isn't telling the whole story because we've still got the GPU that's also going to need power once we start stressing it out. And we can do that with GPU Z. Now you'll see this does jump up to 60 watts. So base TDP on this is about 65 watts. And uh, at 60 with the 4800H, we've got all eight cores at the max clock and the GPU. So if I was to go into the BIOS and up the TDP, which we totally can on this machine, it's really not going to help out with performance because we're getting enough power to the iGPU and the CPU at the same time. But the next thing I wanted to check out were a few benchmarks that I ran on this thing. And the first on the list is Geekbench 6, coming in with a single core of 1433, multi 7764. We're kind of way off from uh, Zen 4, but you know, we're working with the 4000 series. Also ran a couple GPU benchmarks here with 3D Mark. Night Raid coming in with a 13,935. And I also ran Wildlife, which is a Vulcan benchmark for that iGPU, 7,183. We're not going to be winning any kind of benchmark awards here, but I still want to see how this thing handles gaming. We're starting off light with OG Skyrim going into this. I just set it up for 1080p medium settings, and I believe we could go to high because we're not totally maxing out that GPU. But of course, it's an older game, and I wanted to see how some newer stuff performs. And I'm sure with newer games, we will have to take that resolution down and probably use some FSR or resolution scale. And yeah, of course, we had to take that resolution down. But here's Spider-Man Remastered 720p low with FSR set to performance. I was pretty impressed by how well this ran. Going into it, I figured we'd be a little over 30 FPS. But I mean, we're right there on the edge of 60. I always turn V-Sync on with this game using an iGPU because it really does kind of overrun itself. But we actually achieved an average of 57 FPS. Of course, we are at 720p. Basically, the lowest we can go at that, especially using FSR set to performance. But seeing this Radeon 7 iGPU running so well is actually pretty impressive. Next one I wanted to test here was Doom Eternal. And with this, I'm at low, 720p, resolution scale set to 75%. I did have to take that down a bit. But we netted an average of 73 FPS. So the way it's looking right now, you know, with the newer stuff, 720p is really going to be the sweet spot. And I'm sure there's some games we may even need to lock down at 30 to 40 FPS uh, just to kind of get a good experience out of it. But the last one I wanted to test here was God of War. Now with this, I'm at 1080p, but I've got FSR set to ultra performance. We're also at low settings. We got an average of 38 FPS, and this is one of those games. Locking it at 30 is probably what you're going to have to do if you want to run it at 1080. But since we're using, you know, FSR set to ultra performance, I'd say 720 with FSR at performance would give us around the same kind of frame rate. But, you know, with these games that I tested, I actually didn't expect this older iGPU with only seven EUs to run so well. It kind of goes to show what these drivers have been doing for these older iGPUs. So overall, given the price and form factor, not bad. Now, I wouldn't pick this up specifically for gaming. Of course, you can do some gaming like we saw. I would be more inclined to kind of recommend a 7000 series with that uh, RDNA 3 iGPU, but the price is just way more than this thing. But I gotta say, if you're looking for a small form factor PC for everyday computing tasks, web browsing, email checking, document editing, some light family photo editing, and 4K video playback, then this actually might be a pretty decent deal. And if you're interested in learning a little more or maybe picking one of these up, I'll leave some links to Menace Forum's website in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on the um 480 XT, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.